My name is Michael Weichenthal. I'm a dermatologic oncologist from Kiel in northern Germany, and uh, I am the coordinator of the uh, European Melanoma Treatment Registry. My name is uh, Dr. Netan El Asher. I'm a medical oncologist. Uh, I work at the uh, Davidov Medical Center in Israel. So we thank the organizers that we can report about the work that have we uh, being done today to present at the ESCO meeting. So, uh, uh, Nati, could you? Just briefly explain why the thing is important that we did about maintenance therapy yeah. in patients with melanoma. Yes, yeah, so in, when patients with melanoma are treated with immunotherapy and get a good uh, clinical response or partial response and, or complete response, it is unclear what is the optimal duration of maintenance treatment that they should receive. So this is why we started this uh, um, uh, trial. We wanted to investigate what is the optimal uh, duration. So we analyzed um, more than 1,200 patients, right? Yes, so we got 1,200 patients who were uh, recorded with very detailed information uh, in our Eumelarec registry. So these were metastatic melanoma patients receiving immune checkpoint inhibitor ter therapy with either anti-PD-1 single agent or mm. combined ipinevo. So we stratified for patients who achieved a partial remission and a complete remission. And the question was, if they achieve a remission, how long should you maintain the anti-PD-1 treatment yeah. and does it impact the survival? So um, I guess we found something that was really important, didn't we? Yeah, so, so we stratified those patients into three different types of periods of uh, maintenance therapy. So the short term was less than six months, the intermediate was between six and 12 months, and then the longer period was more than one year of treatment. Uh, and so at that point we stopped and we thought about the mitigating the uh, um, uh, immortal time bias that is inherited in this type of retrospective analysis. Yeah, so the, the thing is that clinical trials really haven't evaluated how long should you treat patients who are in remission. So if you use uh, this research question for observational data, you have uh, very tough statistical issues there. And the most important is that if you think of maintaining treatment, you have something that's called immortal time bias. So only patients who stay on remission will receive 12 months or more than treatment. So we found some very subtle methods to overcome this bias. And uh, so we could really have some solid and robust results now on the question, what should I do with a patient who achieves a partial remission. So, yeah. so first of all, the, the survival analysis is completely different between those who achieve partial response and, over, and the complete response. So they have, those with CR have a much better PFS and OS. So we had to analyze them kind of separately. Uh, so looking at those patients with partial response, we saw that prolonged treatment with uh, maintenance immunotherapy is translated into better uh, PFS and OS. So if you look at those patients who are treated with for more than 12 months beyond their response and compared it to those who were treated for less than six months, we saw a, a very important hazard ratio of about 0.5 for PFS and also for OS. And if we compare those who achieved, who, who were treated for more than 12 months to the intermediate group, that was also significant. And even when comparing the intermediate to those short-term uh, duration of less than six months, that was also very significant. So we can conclude that uh, continuing immunotherapy uh, for more than 12 months in those patients who achieve partial response is important and they should be treated for more than one year at least. Right, so we're actually speaking about the treatment duration from the time point of remission. So it is an additional treatment of at least one year for those with a partial response. So how about those who achieve a complete response since um, clinical practice is quite heterogeneous mm -hmm. here. Some say we can stop very early, some say 
we don't have data and we need to be cautious. So what were our results? Yeah, so, so for those who had complete response, the picture was completely different. It looks like a prolonged duration of uh, immunotherapy as maintenance looks kind of futile. So mm, more than 12 months or between 6 and 12 uh, is not different in terms of overall survival and progression free survival from those who were treated for less than six months. So uh, it looks like they don't need more than six months of treatment beyond the point of complete response. However, this should be uh, interpreted with caution because we did not have a, a large enough sample size to, to uh, evaluate which other maybe other subgroups do benefit from uh, prolonged treatment. So this, this uh, um, is in general a general statement that uh, less than six months is okay, but the selection should be a, a case by case. All right, so the take home message would be if you achieve a partial remission, you should stay on treatment if possible because it translates into uh, at least 10% uh, survival benefit for those patients. For patients with complete response, it might be safe to stop the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy within six months, but we are not sure about particular subgroups, so maybe patients uh, with brain metastasis or other bad prognostic factors need to be re-evaluated in further studies. So uh, a final thing just to point this out, there was no difference in patients who achieved the response by anti-PD-1 single agent mm -hmm. up front or patients who received the combined anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1 treatment. So this seems to hold true for both regimens. Yeah, so this is very important. I think that the results of this trial show us the importance of the depth of response and how important it is and the impact on the decisions that you take afterwards in the management of the patients. So the biology speaks louder. That's true. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.